I want to ask you one final question here, which is about um, specific advice or tips that you might give to new patients watching this. We've done this in a lot of videos and I think it's one of our um, best questions in a way because it gives you the opportunity to speak to somebody who might be watching this new. You know, some, sometime yeah. in the future somebody's going to tune in and see you now. Obviously they haven't lived through every moment that you've gone through and they're nervous, scared, worried about what they're going to have to face. They might have just been told the diagnosis, they might be waiting for their first appointment. You know, there's every possible scenario out there. Have you got any advice or tips for people watching this? Um, I would say that in the main, um, try and keep an open mind because with the best will in the world, and it depends what type of cancer it is, I'm speaking personally from breast cancer, um, you may have a lot of tests and you may be told that you've got cancer at the first appointment. Um, try not to think that it's going to be the worst possible one until all those results are through. I wrongly held on to the naive feeling that I wouldn't have chemotherapy because I was told with what was medically available as evidence at the time that I wouldn't need chemotherapy. Then I had a very nasty shot when six weeks down the line they actually looked at the histology of the tissue they'd taken and said, oh, but you will. Try also not to think as chemotherapy is a very negative thing. It is a, it, it is a positive thing, although it's not a, a good experience. Um, some of the stuff they tell you is pretty frightening about keeping away from people. Um, mainly that is just to cut down risk of infection while your cells are depleted. Um, and you can, there are ways around certain things. Try and plan your life around that a little bit and just see it as time out. The other thing I'd say is try not to be a hero. Um, I did know a, a gentleman that I made friends with in Chemo Suite who tried to go to work every day um, while he was going through the chemo process. Yes, work can be a very positive thing. It keeps you going, it keeps your routine. However, it can be quite exhausting and sometimes it's your body's own way of saying, you've earned this, you need to just settle it. If you lose your hair, what I did was, I went from this length to obviously nothing and then Mr. Tufty. So I then decided I was gonna go back to my punk days and have it spiky. And I know that a lot of ladies or a lot of people and men, um, because it's open to them as well, um, had different wigs in different colours for mood. You know, try and make it an artistic experience. If you can bring humour into it, it will help you along. It's not always possible, but you know, you can at least say, you know, you're not going to beat me. I nicknamed mine, you know, Charlie Cancer. You're not going to beat me, Charlie, because you're there, but you'll be going. Um, you know, other people have, have done similar things. Um, and just really keep going as best you can. If you feel anxieties and worries are building up um, and you're not able to speak to your family about it, um, I would definitely try and get dialogue going about, you know, referral, maybe if things are very bad or getting worse to someone in a team. Um, at any stage of the journey, at any nurse or radiotherapy, or even at the outpatients about speaking uh, about the psycho-oncology uh, service because that is a marvellous thing. They've got self-help tools and it's a physical talking thing as well. It's not just let's walk through the Macmillan department, beautiful though it is, very professional though it is. Not everyone is going to be helped by being given a leaflet. It's not always about a leaflet. Some people will get good stuff from that some people won't for some people it might make it worse they'll be looking at a leaflet reading it absorbing the wrong things thinking negatives and not being able to have someone explain it possibly through to them um, and so in that way you know the help is there so try and get support don't be too proud you know and keep you, going definitely You've given the answer slightly, uh, totally understandably from a Leicester perspective where we do have a dedicated unit and um, we've done 
tried our best to promote the cause of psychological and emotional issues. But just out of curiosity, what if somebody's watching this in a less well-developed area or in an area where there's disputes over what resources are available for psycho-oncology? Um, what do you think people can do there in order to not be ignored? Should they be fighting for a service, which is a very t tall order for an individual to do? You know, it could be a long-term objective. What they want is help for themselves now, isn't it? Yes. Um, can they, could they go to their GP, do you think? Who, um, well, who, for me, I didn't who? know how the service, the psycho-oncology, uh, was made available to patients. On a personal level, I got a referral because I went into a meltdown in the clinic in radiotherapy. Um, however, you can, your GP can refer you across, I understand, to a psycho-oncology department, if there's one in your area, and various other professionals around that. Um, and the other thing, of course, is if you haven't got access to that, one of the reasons that the cancer stories was um, originally evolved was because people are in isolation, because there may not be those facilities. That is available via a link on the web. You can just go in on www.cancerstories and see different people with different cancers giving tips, talking about their journeys, uh, good and bad, it has to be pointed out. Um, and, you know, hopefully not feel so isolated and alone. You, you're sharing an experience, albeit not on face to face or side by side. You still have that connection with that person because you are sharing some of the same issues, worries and positives. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of the people that have watched Cancer Stories, it's inspired them even as patients who hadn't done one to go on then and do their own to help others. So, you know, that was a natural progression, um, really, of, of what was going on to try and reach out to more people.